Here we could talk about um, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis in plants, probably a higher plants. Okay, photosynthesis, which is a very unique property of the plant kingdom, because they are the people, they are the set of kingdom which creates food for the whole world. Yeah, it's quite important. So there is some physical elements involved. There are some chemical elements elements involved. Huh? Photosynthesis. Huh? Introduction to photosynthesis. The energy required by all living organisms comes directly or indirectly from the sunlight. Sunlight plays an important role in fixation of carbon dioxide through which conversion of the solar energy into chemical energy. Conversion of solar energy into chemical energy takes place. Water plays a significant role during this process. So, solar energy to chemical energy. Yeah. Hence, photosynthesis is the process by which all green plants, some bacteria and some protists, euglena, use the energy from sunlight to produce sugar, which through cellular respiration produce ATP. The fuel used by all living organisms important of the photosynthesis. Eh? What are the importance of the photosynthesis? It is the primary source of all food on the earth. That's it. It's also responsible for the release of oxygen into the atmosphere by green plants. So two major roles. Okay. Moving on to the next slide. On the basis of the outline knowledge about the role of light, green plants, carbon dioxide, etc. In the process of photosynthesis, several simple experiments might be performed indicating that light, carbon dioxide, chlorophyll and water are essential raw materials. They are essential raw materials for photosynthesis. Let's look at one by one. Light. The necessity of light for photosynthesis can be shown by fixing dark paper. Eh? Take a dark paper on the leaf of the well-watered but de-starched plant. After fixing the paper, setup is exposed to sunlight for 2 to 6 hours. After removing the dark paper, the test for starch is performed over the leaf. What will happen? Starch is produced only in the area where sunlight is received. That shows that light is necessary for photosynthesis. Let's move on to the second one. Carbon. To initiate half leaf experiment, a part of leaf is enclosed in the test tube. The test tube contains some cotton soaked potassium hydroxide and another half leaf is exposed to light. What does this potassium hydroxide does? The setup is then allowed to stand in the light for about few hours. The potassium hydroxide takes away all the carbon dioxide. When the starch test is done, it was observed that the exposed part of leaf was tested positive for starch while the portion that was enclosed in the tube tested negative. This indicates that carbon dioxide is also essential for the photosynthesis to take place. Hmm? Photosynthesis to take place. Chlorophyll. Look at the chlorophyll. It's a green pigment on the leaf. To start with this experiment, two leaves are taken. One, a variegated leaf or a leaf that must partially covered with black paper and another leaf that must be exposed to light. When these leaves are tested for presence of starch, it was observed that photosynthesis had occurred only in the green part of the leaves in the presence of light, which ensures that chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis. Now look at water. 
without water what can be done hmm? through radio labeling of oxygen in water water molecule it is confirmed that oxygen released during photosynthesis comes from water and not from carbon dioxide hmm? so the oxygen could have come from the carbon dioxide itself but it actually comes from the water molecule next study the study of photosynthesis started about hundreds of years ago prior to that the researchers used to believe that plants get all their nourishment from soil only by the means of the root right many of us still believe that thus several simple experiments led to the development of understanding of the process involved eh, develop to understanding the process involved in the next slide what you are going to see is somebody called joseph princely performed a series of experiment in 1770 that revealed that the essentiality of air in the growth of the green plant eh? so he mentioned the growth of the green plant he observed that a burning candle or a respiring mouse in a closed space in a kept in the bell jar soon get extinguished and died due to suffocation because burning candle and animal that breathe the air soon get damaged on the other hand after placing a mint plant in the bell jar eh, just the mint plant in the bell jar along with the burning candle and the mouse he observed that the mouse stayed alive and also the candles continued to burn for a longer time so what did he conclude he hypothesized that the foul air produced by burning of the candle and mouse respiration could be converted into pure air by the plant which here it is mint plant okay so in this experiment with an aquatic plant the botanist showed that in bright sunlight formation of small bubbles takes place around the green parts while in the dark formation of those bubbles did not take place hmm? formation of those bubble did not take place so what did the scientist conclude he concluded that the bubbles that he observed were oxygen and showed that only green parts of the plants could release oxygen hmm? he showed that only the green parts of the plant could release oxygen so these are the ex experiment that previous our uh, scientists did it okay let's see what um, some other uh, person did it eh? in 1854 he provided the evidence that glucose is produced when plants grows which is usually stored as starch the scientist later showed that a green substance that is chlorophyll is found to be located in special bodies called chloroplast so this chlorophyll which is present in the chloroplast was responsible for the food production in the plant cell so what did he conclude the scientists concluded that green part are the place in the plant where production of glucose takes place and the same gets converted in the form of starch for storage hmm? converted in the form of starch for storage moving on to the next slide there is another interesting experiment with green algae cladophora cladophora splitted light into the spectral component by using prism what happened it illuminated the algae placed in the suspension of aerobic bacteria rhodospirillium what was noticed to notice that the accumulation of bacteria was mainly in the region of blue and red light hmm? it was just the blue and red light of the split spectrum so here what was concluded the work done by the scientists at first 
action spectrum of photosynthesis was thus described which roughly resembles the absorption spectra of the chlorophyll okay absorption spectra of the chlorophyll a and b therefore the key feature of the process of photosynthesis were known by middle of the 19th century such a long 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 time ago we are in 20 first century now which detail the plant acquires light energy harvested from the sunlight for formation of carbohydrates eh, which is our food from carbon dioxide and water the empirical equation thus determined the total process of photosynthesis for organisms that evolves oxygen is understood as NCO2 plus NH2O that equals in the presence of light it produces CH2O in plus O2 is the carbohydrate here like glucose eh? glucose will have six carbon atoms okay now what did the other microbiologist what did he find out moving on to the next slide who made a significant contribution on the basis of his studies of purple and green sulfur bacteria purple and green sulfur bacteria photosynthetic bacteria is understanding the photosynthesis he demonstrated that during the process of photosynthesis eh, during the process of photosynthesis the hydrogen from a suitable oxidizable compound transferred which reduces the carbon dioxide to carbohydrates in the presence of sunlight carbohydrates in the presence of sunlight okay with the help of this he concluded that photosynthesis is a light dependent phenomenon eh? further he stated that in the photosynthesis bacteria h2s eh? bacteria h2s acts as a hydrogen donor is there eh? which gets oxidized to sulfur which get oxidized to sulfur that is so this bacterium does not evolve oxygen during the process of photosynthesis you got the point here while in the case of green plants water acts as a hydrogen donor which evolves oxygen as a product thus he inferred inferred that oxygen which is evolved by the green plants comes from the water and not carbon dioxide it was later proved by use of radioisotopic techniques thus the overall reaction of photosynthesis is represented by 6 carbon dioxide to 12 water molecules in the presence of light will produce C6H12O6 plus 6 molecules of water and 6 molecules of oxygen. So then he concluded that light is necessary to oxidize the photosynthetic substrate. H2S is a photosynthetic bacteria and H2O in green plant and released by the product sulfur and O2 in bacteria and green plants respectively okay in the absence of sunlight this process does not occur the experiment concluded by a scientist has revealed that there exist two types of photosynthesis eh? there are two types of photosynthesis one is the oxygenic photosynthesis which occurs in cyanobacterium hmm? oxygenic photosynthesis which occurs in cyanobacterium in this water is the electron donor and o2 is evolved hmm? o2 is evolved non oxygenic photosynthesis rhodospirillium hmm? purple non sulfur bacteria hmm? purple non sulfur bacteria chlorobium hmm? chlorobium that is green sulfur bacterium carried out photosynthesis by use of H2S it is the electron donor for them here O2 is not evolved instead 
sulfur is the byproduct. This bacterium photosynthesis is called as anoxygenic or non-oxygenic photosynthesis. It is called as non-oxygenic photosynthesis. So we learned that all the food that is available, it is all come from combination of sunlight, carbon dioxide and water. So that is the fundamental that produces glucose and from there goes to starch and then it comes to animal and all those things. In photosynthesis, there are about two types. One is with the oxygen, one without oxygen. Very interesting subject. Yeah. So once you understand the fundamentals, then we can move on. Plastids. These are green plastids that function as the site of photosynthesis. Hmm? It's the site of photosynthesis. It is like the kitchen. Helps in the synthesis of organic food. The process of photosynthesis takes place in green leaves of the plant because chloroplast are abundantly present in the mesophyll cells of the leaves. Yeah? Mesophyll cell of the leaves. Chloroplast is double membrane bound. Yeah? It's double membrane. DNA and ribosome containing semi-autonomous cell organelles. Yeah? Semi-autonomous cell organelles. Internally, a chloroplast containing a proteinous matrix of fluid called stroma, the membrane system called lamellae or thylakoids. Eh? Lamellae or thylakoids. At some places, the thylakoids get aggregated to form stakes of this called grana. Eh? It is called as grana. The clear division of labor occurs within the chloroplast that is the membrane system is responsible for trapping of solar energy whereas the stroma has enzymes which are responsible for reduction of carbon dioxide into carbohydrates and formation of sugars. As the former set of reaction is dependent on light, so are called as a light reaction, while the later is dependent on the products of the light reaction. Okay, so first is the light reaction. ATP and NADPH thus are called dark reaction. It is called as dark reaction because it directly doesn't need light. Moving on to the next slide. The pigments involved in the process of photosynthesis are called photosynthetic pigments. These pigments provide different shades of green in the leaves in different plants or in the leaves of same plants or the leaves of same plants. These pigments can easily be separated out by chromatographic techniques and eh, separated by chromatographic techniques on the basis of their significance. The photosynthetic pigments are of two types. The photosynthetic pigments are of two types. Number one, primary pigments. The pigment forms the main molecule of photosynthesis that is chlorophyll. Eh, chlorophyll A and B. Next is the accessory pigment. Uh, accessory pigment. These support the function of primary pigments. Uh, they support the function of the primary pig pigments. Example, xanthophylls and carotenoid A. Xanthophylls and carotenoid A. Chromatographic separation of the leaf pigment shows that it is not only the single pigment which is responsible for the color in the leaf, instead the different shades in the leaf are due to four different pigments. Okay, remember this, there are four different pigments that have different ability to absorb light at specific wavelength. So all these four have a different absorption power at different wavelengths. Different pigments present in the leaves are described as chlorophyll A, this is bright or blue green in color, chromatogram. It is known to be the chief plant pigment associated with 
photosynthesis hmm, associated with the photosynthesis next is the chlorophyll b this is yellow green in color eh? it is yellow green in color next is the xanthophylls this is yellow in color this is yellow in color these pigments are oxidized carotenoids eh? oxidized carotenoids fourth one is the carotenoids this is yellow to yellow orange in color these are also known as antenna pigments eh? these are also known as antenna pigments chlorophyll is the most abundant plant pigment found in the plants in the world it contains magnesium metal as its constituents chlorophyll a is found in all photosynthesizing cells okay in the next slide what we are seeing is it is the curve that shows the amount of different wavelength of light absorbed by a substance the graph given shows the ability of chlorophyll to absorb lights of different wavelength chlorophyll a shows the maximum absorption peak at 450 nanometer uh, 450 nanometer and also shows another peak at 650 nanometer absorption spectrum is constituted by the pigments like violet blue orange and red 400 to 500 and 600 to 700 nanometer lights the emission spectrum is constituted by yellow and yellow green pigments yellow and yellow green pigments that is 500 to 500 nanometers the next slide what you are seeing is it is a curve that depicts the relative rates of photosynthesis different wavelengths of light another graph given below shows the wavelength at which maximum photosynthesis occurs at blue violet and red wavelength in the plant hmm? blue violet and red wavelength in the plant hence this concludes that chlorophyll a is the chief pigment which is majorly responsible for the photosynthesis such an interesting information yeah the following graphs also shows below the action spectrum of photosynthesis which coincide closely to the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll absorption spectrum of chlorophyll hence all three graphs together shows that the major part of the photosynthesis takes place in the blue and red region in the blue and red region while some of the photosynthesis takes place in the blue and red region while some of the photosynthesis takes place at other wavelengths also in the visible spectrum apart from chlorophyll a chlorophyll a which is mainly responsible for trapping of light other thylakoids pigments such as chlorophyll b xanthophylls and carotenoids all absorb light transferring energy to the chlorophyll a these pigments are called as accessory pigments eh? these are pigments are called as accessory pigments these pigments enable a wider range of wavelength of incoming light to be utilized for photosynthesis and also provide protection to chlorophyll a from photo oxidation chlorophyll a to photo oxidation in the next slide it was observed that the rate of photosynthesis is directly proportional to the intensity of the light hmm? to the intensity of light rate increases with the increase in the intensity of the light till the plant achieves the saturation point the process of photosynthesis takes place in two steps first is the light reaction first is light reaction the light reaction includes the first step is absorption of light then splitting of water release of oxygen and finally the formation of high energy chemical intermediates 
ATP and NADPH. During the course of light reaction, light is trapped by photosynthetic pigments present in the glutosomes and granulothalotycoids. There, granulothalotycoids. These photosynthetic pigments are organized into two discrete photochemicals, life harvesting complexes known as photosystem one. And PS1 and photosystem 2, that is PS2. The light harvesting complex or photosystem are made up of hundreds of pigment molecules, uh, hundreds of pigment molecules bound by proteins, um, bound by proteins. Each photosystem has a photocenter or reaction center, photocenter or reaction center where actual reaction takes places uh, actual reactions takes places this reaction center contains a special chlorophyll a molecules uh, it contains a special chlorophyll a molecule it is fed by hundreds of other pigment molecules and it forms a light harvesting system called antennae mm, antennae these antennae molecules absorb light of different wavelength but shorter than reaction center in order to make photosynthesis more efficient. The reaction center is different in both the photosystem and is given below. In PS1, the reaction center or the chlorophyll A has peak of absorption at 700 nanometer. So, it is also called as P700. In PS2, the reaction center has absorbed peak at 680 nanometer and hence it is called as P680. It is simple. In the next slide, the photosynthetic electron transport chain initiates the absorption of light energy. Electron transport chain initiates the absorption of light energy by the photosystem, yeah, by the photosystem 2, the light of the wavelength 680 nanometers is absorbed by the reaction center of photosystem 2, due to which a pair of electron becomes excited and jump into an orbit away from the atomic nucleus, yeah, away from the atomic nucleus. These electrons are then picked up by a electron acceptor which passes them further to electron transport system consisting of cytochromes. It is to be noted that this movement of electrons is downhill according to redox potential scale, eh? according to the redox potential scale. The electron transport chain are not used in the chain, instead they are further passed on to the pigments of PS1. Now, like the PS2, the electron in the reaction center of PS1 also get excited on receiving the red light of wavelength 700 nanometers and gets transferred to the another electron acceptor with higher redox potential, with higher redox potential. But this time the electron does not move to the reaction center or the chlorophyll A. Instead, it moves to a molecule rich in energy and NADP+. On addition of these electrons, the NADP+, gets reduced to NADPH+, plus hydrogen ion, in 1960, Bendel and Hill discovered the Z scheme of electron transport. It is a series of reactions that we have just studied above from whole scheme of electron transfer initiating from PS2 uphill to the acceptor molecule down the electron transport chain to PS1, excitation of the electron and then they are transferred to 
another acceptor and finally downhill to NADP plus in order to get reduced to NADPH and H plus B. The next slide, the electrons are continuously supplied to photosystem 2 by the available electrons which gets re replaced due to the splitting of water. Hmm? Splitting of water. In this process, the water splits into protons, electrons and oxygen. The complex for water splitting is associated with the photosystem. It is associated with the photosystem 2 that is located on the inner side of the thylakoid membrane. Uh, inner side of the thylakoid membrane. Manganese and chlorine ion also play important role in the photolysis of water molecules. These electrons thus obtained by the splitting of water are needed to replace those electrons which are removed from the photosystem 1. Thus are provided by photosystem 2. That is 2H2O to 4H plus O2. Yeah. That gives 4 electrons. While all the electrons formed or replaced the proton gets accumulated in the lumen of thylakoids and the oxygen is evolved into the atmosphere. Oxygen is evolved into the atmosphere. Let's see what is phosphorylation. Phosphorylation is the process through which ATP is synthesized from ADP. Yeah, so simple. Phosphorylation is the process through which ATP, hmm, adenosine triphosphate, in synthesis from ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and inorganic phosphate P by the cell organelles. When it occurs in the presence of sunlight in chloroplast, it is called photophosphorylation. The photophosphorylation in mitochondria is not light dependent but it uses the energy by oxidation of nutrients to produce ATP to produce ATP hence it is called oxidative phosphorylations eh? oxidative phosphorylations non cyclic phosphorylation is a type of phosphorylation in which both the photosystem that is PS1 and PS2 Cooperate in light driven synthesis of ATP. Light driven synthesis of ATP. During this cycle, the electrons released from PS2 does not return back to its, hence it is known as non cyclic phosphorylation. It is called as non cyclic photophosphorylation. Both NADPH and ATP are formed during this reaction are used in light independent reaction and are called reducing power. It is called as reducing power. Cyclic photophosphorylation, it is the type of photophosphorylation in which only PS1 is taking part and the electron release from the reaction center P700 return back it after passing through a series of carriers that is circulation takes within the photosystem and the phosphorylation occurs due to cyclic flow of electrons eh? cyclic flow of electrons the cyclic photophosphorylations takes place in the stromal lamella of chloroplast and eh, stromal lamella of chloroplast this happens because the stromal lamella does not possess enzyme NADP reductase and PS2 thus the excited electron in the cyclic phos photophosphorylation does not pass on to NADP positive plus instead it gets cycled back to the PS1 complex hence 
in the cyclic phosphorylation only the synthesis of ATP takes place. The next slide what we are seeing is the hypothesis was given by Peter Mitchell in order to explain the ATP synthesis in photosynthesis which is also the respiration. Okay, The synthesis of ATP is directly linked to the development of proton gradient across the thylakoids proton gradients across the thylakoid membranes of a chloroplast of a chloroplast the main difference that lies between the photosynthesis and respiration is the location where the accumulation of protons take place in chloroplast it occurs in thylakoid lumen while in mitochondria it occurs in intermembrane space hmm? it occurs in intermembrane space now the point arises that what causes the proton gradient across the membranes the development of proton gradient results due to the reasons as the water molecules split the inner side of the membrane the proton or hydrogen ion that are produced by water splitting it is produced by water splitting gets accumulated within the thylakoids okay so get accumulated within the thylakoid lumen next transportation of protons takes place across the membranes when the electron moves through the photosystem the primary acceptor of electron is located towards the outer side of the membrane it's located towards the outer side of the membrane which transfers electron to the proton that is h plus proton carrier and not to the electron carrier okay so this molecule while transporting an electron removes a proton from the stroma thus release of proton takes place into the inner side of thylakoids uh, inner side of thylakoids that is on the lumen of the membrane on the lumen of the membrane the enzyme NADP reductase is present on stromal side of the membrane present on the stromal side of the membrane thus along with the electron that come from the acceptor of electrons of PS1 protons are also necessary to reduce NADP plus to NADPH plus hydrogen ion hence proton in the stroma within the chloroplast decreases in number while accumulation of the protons take place in the lumen eh? while accumulation of proton takes place in the lumen due to which protein gradients is created across thylakoid membrane eh? across thylakoid membrane which led to the decrease in pH at the site the lumen at the site of the lumen the gradient is broken down due to the movement of proton across the membranes to the stromal through the transmembrane channel of F0 portion of ATPase enzyme. Therefore, the proton gradient is important as it is the gradient whose breakdown leads to the release of energy ATP. ATPase enzyme, the enzyme ATPase consists of two parts of thylakoids and two parts of thylakoids one is f0 particle this portion remains embedded in the membrane and forms a transmembrane channel and forms a transmembrane channel which carries out facilitate diffusion of proton that is h plus across the membrane Next is the F1 particle. We read about the F0 particle. Now it's the F1 particle. 
this portion protrudes towards the outer surface of the thylakoid membrane which faces the stroma. Conformational change occurs in F1 particle of ATPase which are caused due to the breakdown of the gradients. This allows the enzyme ATP synthesis to synthesize several molecules of ADP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Thus the chemoosmosis for its functioning requires a membrane, a proton pump, a proton gradient and ATPase enzyme. The ATP thus produced will be used simultaneously in the biosynthetic reaction in the stroma which is responsible for carbon dioxide and synthesis of sugar. In the next slide, this phase does not require direct sunlight but it depends on the product of the light reaction, product of the light reaction that is ATP and NADPH besides carbon dioxide and water that drive the processes leading to synthesis of food more accurately the sugars. More accurately the sugars, glucose is first product of photosynthesis. Thus, assimilation of carbon dioxide during photosynthesis is of two main types is of two main types. C3 pathway. This pathway is followed by the plants when first product of carbon dioxide fixation is a C3 acid. PGA is the example for it. C4 pathway. This pathway is followed or shown by the plant in which first product of carbon dioxide fixation is a C4 acid that is OAA. This is a cycle biochemical pathway of reduction of carbon dioxide or photosynthetic carbon cycle which was discovered by Kelvin. The Kelvin cycle runs in all photosynthetic plants no matter they show C3, C4 or any other pathway. It occurs in stroma of the chloroplast. It occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. Primary acceptor of carbon dioxide in C3 pathway after a long research and conducting many experiments, it was concluded by the scientists that in C3 pathway, the acceptor molecule is a 5 carbon ketose sugar. 5-carbon keto sugar. The name is Rebulose 5-bisphosphate eh, RUBP. Kelvin or C3 cycle has following three major steps. Number one, glycotic reversal or formation of sugar and takes place between reduction and regeneration. Eh, reduction and regeneration. There are three major steps which we should know about it. First is the carboxylation. It is the most crucial step of Calvin cycle. In this, fixation of carbon dioxide molecule takes place in the form of carboxylation of RUBP. This finally leads to the formation of two molecules of 3-phosphoglycate glyceric acid, 3-phosphoglyceric eh? acid. As the RUBP carboxylase enzyme also has an activity of oxygenation. Thus, it is more commonly known as RUBP. Carboxylase, oxygenase or RUBBIS-CO. Reduction after carboxylation reaction. Eh? Reduction after carboxylation, reduction of PGA takes place through a series of reaction 
leading to the formation of glucose. In this step, the ATP and NADPH are utilized. It is to be noted that two molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADPH are utilized in this step for phosphorylation and for the reduction of carbon dioxide respectively. Hence, the fixation of six molecules of carbon dioxide and six turns of the cycle are required in order to release one molecule of glucose from the pathway. Regeneration for the continuous and uninterrupted functioning of the Kelvin cycle, there must be a regular supply of ATP, NADPH and also sufficient amount of RUBP is required. The regeneration of RUBP that is carbon dioxide acceptor is a complex process and involves many types of sugar starting from triose that is 3C to heptose that is 7C. The regeneration step requires one ATP molecule for phosphorylation. One ATP molecule for phosphorylation. Hence, for every carbon dioxide molecule that enters the Kelvin cycle are required three molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADPH. Thus, in order to produce one molecule of glucose through the Kelvin pathway, 18 ATP and 12 NADPH are required. This can be easily understood by looking at the table down. Okay. So, in, out, 6 CO2. Hmm? So, if you look at this one and think carefully, we will be able to find out what it is. Now, let's see what is C4 pathway. Hmm? C4 pathway, it was worked out by two Australian scientists. Okay. This is also known as Hatch and Slack pathway because of their name. H-A-T-C-H and Slack pathway. C4 plants are special as they have a special type of leaf anatomy. Special type of leaf anatomy that can tolerate high temperatures and show a response to high in intensities in spite of having oxaloacetic acid and you know, oxaloacetic acid as their first carbon dioxide fixing product they use c3 pathway of kelvin cycle as the main photosynthetic pathway as a main photosynthetic pathway according to the structural leaf anatomy of c3 and c4 plants the leaves of c3 plants show only one type of cells called mesophyll cells which contain only mesophyll chloroplast while leaves of C4 plants show two types of cells and eh? two types of cells that is outer mesophyll cells and inner spongy cells around the vascular bundles called bundle sheath cells bundle sheath cells arranged in a circular manner. The mesophyll cells contain well developed, okay, the mesophyll cells contain well developed granular chloroplast. They actively participate in light reaction. These produce ATP and NADPH2. The rudimentary chloroplasts are present in the cells of bundle sheath present in the bundle sheet. They are a granule. The bundle sheet cells are mainly meant to carry out C3 style. This does not require well developed chloroplast so they are rudimentary. Hmm? They are rudimentary lamellar type. Rudimentary lamellar type. The bundle sheet cells tend to form several layers around the vascular bundles, around the vascular bundles. They possess several special features such as 
they have a large number of chloroplast hmm? large number of chloroplast thick walls which are impervious to gaseous exchange which is impervious to the gases exchange there are no intracellular space eh? there are no intracellular space step 1 in c4 plants the initial fixation of carbon dioxide occurs in mesophyll cells the primary acceptor of carbon dioxide is phosphophenol pyruvate eh? phosphophenol pyruvate step 2 it combines with carbon dioxide in the presence of an enzyme phosphophenol pyruvate carboxylase or pep carboxylase to form the first stable product of c4 pathway that is oxaloacetic acid in step 3 the compound oxaloacetic acid are transported to the bundle sheath cells where they are broken down releasing carbon dioxide and three carbon molecule eh? three carbon molecule in the next step step 4 the three carbon compound is again transported back to the mesophyll cells where regeneration of pep takes place thus completing the cycle we got read this cycle three four times for us to know exactly what is happening the carbon dioxide thus released in the bundle sheath cells enters the c3 or the calvin cycle in the next slide rubp carboxylase oxygenase is the main enzyme of dark reaction it also catalyzes another reaction that interferes with the functioning of calvin cycle it has active site for both carbon dioxide and oxygen the relative concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen determines which of the two will bind to the enzyme under the conditions when oxygen con concentration is more in the atmosphere than the carbon dioxide then c3 plants eh, that is rubis co acts as the carboxylase enzyme and carbon dioxide fixation does not lead to pga formation instead phosphoglycerate and phosphoglutate are formed and photorespiration occurs hmm? photorespiration occurs thus the photorespiratory pathway is called a wasteful process due to two reasons there is no synthesis of sugar and atp or nadph the carbon dioxide is released with the utilization of atp on the other side the process of photorespiration does not take place in c4 plants because through a certain mechanism the carbon dioxide concentration increases at the enzyme site this happens when c4 acid that is oaa eh, from the mesophyll cells tends to be broken down in the bundle sheath cells releasing carbon dioxide thereby increasing the intracellular concentration of carbon dioxide intracellular concentration of the carbon dioxide hence rubp the carboxylase enzymes eh, functions more as a carboxylase and minimizing the role of oxygenase minimizing the role of oxygenase as c4 plants lack the process of photorespiration the productivity and yields in the in these plants are better than those in c3 plants better than those in the c3 plants the next slide it is generally influenced by the number of factors including both external that is environmental and internal factors these are number 1 internal factors 
the internal factors are planned factors greatly depends on the genetic predisposition eh? genetic predisposition and basically the growth of the plant these includes the number size age and orientation of leaves chlorophyll content internal concentration of co2 mesophyll cells and chloroplast external factors these factors generally include an environmental factor like availability of sunlight environmental factors like availability of sunlight temperature concentration of carbon dioxide and water it was later stated that when a process is controlled by more than one factor then the rate of the when a process is controlled by more than one factor then the rate of process is limited by the factor which is nearest to minimal value which is nearest to the minimal value it is the factor which will affect the rate if its quantity will be changed some of the factors that affect the photosynthetic rate are number 1 light the light provides the energy for photosynthesis the light provides the energy for photosynthesis thus it is one of the major factor which affects the rate of photosynthesis three characteristics of the light the intensity quality and duration generally influences the rate so discussing the light as a factor that affects photosynthesis two conditions are observed hmm? two conditions are observed at low light intensities the linear relationship between incident light and rate of carbon dioxide fixation occurs while at the higher intensity of light the rate fails to show further increase as the other factors become limiting next carbon dioxide concentration carbon dioxide concentration in c4 plants also the photosynthesis increases as the carbon dioxide concentration increases but at much lower concentration of carbon dioxide these plants tends to attain saturation level thus it concludes that the current availability of carbon dioxide level is a limiting factor to the c3 plants it has been demonstrated by the scientists that the c3 plants can grow much faster and lead to higher productivity due to the higher rate of photosynthesis thus in order to obtain higher yield some greenhouse crops like tomato bell pepper etc are allowed to grow in the atmosphere enriched with carbon dioxide now look at the temperature enzyme controlled dark reaction are affected by change in the temperature they are affected by the change in the temperature photosynthesis occurs in a very wide range of temperature the c4 plants respond to a higher temperature the c4 plants respond to a higher temperature showing higher rate of photosynthesis on the other hand the c3 plants have much lower optimum temperature lower optimum temperature range when temperature is increased from minimum to optimum eh, from minimum to optimum the rate of photosynthesis doubles for every 10 degree centigrade and rise in the temperature but when the temperature reaches above optimum range the rate of photosynthesis show initial increase for a very short duration of time which later gets declined which later get declined different plants have 
different optimum temperature range for photosynthesis. It depends upon their habitat. The tropical plants have higher temperature range for photosynthesis than the temperature plants and temporal region plants. Water. The effect of water as a factor is more on the plants as a whole rather than directly on the photosynthesis in water stress conditions. In water stress conditions. The stomata becomes closed, which reduces the availability of carbon dioxide to plants. Hmm? Carbon dioxide to plants, thereby causing reduction in the rate of photosynthesis. Besides this, the decrease in water availability causes leaves to wilt, thus reducing the surface area of the leaves. Ultimately, reducing their metabolic activities. Hmm? Ultimately reducing their metabolic activities. It is little complicated, but see these slides and hear it for two times, you will get what is needed for NEAT exam. You don't have to write everything for NEAT exam. That is plus two. Here we just have to answer right or wrong and you'll get full marks. It is just mere practice. We will get through this neat in a very flying beautiful colors. You doctors.